going to begin by having a look at which one from exercise 8b, Nabil, did you want to have a look at? I think question seven was going to be a good one to have a look at. I think a few people probably would have found this one quite challenging. So it says that a curve has parametric equations. x equals uh, 3 cot squared 2t and y equals 3 sine squared 2t. And it says that t is between 0 and pi over 4. But we'll worry about this bit in a second, because the first thing it wants us to do is to find a Cartesian equation in the form y equals f of x. So we want to combine these two things together. Now, I hope this is some of the stuff you've been doing with Mr. Udin, but what is um, cot squared going to be the same as? One over tan squared, but perhaps the better way to remember that, instead of doing one over tan, is to kind of flip what tan is. So instead of being sine squared over cos squared, it will be cos squared 2t over sine squared 2t. So right now, that's cool because we could actually substitute in something for sine squared t from y, but I don't have something for cos squared t. How do you think I could use this part to find out what cos squared 2t is? What, what um, identity would link sine squared and cos squared together? Yeah, so we know that sine squared of theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So similarly, sine squared 2t would be 1 minus cos squared 2t. So what I can do here is I can actually replace the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared 2t. So y is 3 lots of 1 minus cos squared 2t. And I'm trying to find out what cos squared 2t is so I can substitute it into this part of the parametric equation. So y is 3 minus 3 cos squared 2t. And when I rearrange this, I get that 3 cos squared 2t is 3 minus y, just by sw swapping those things around. So cos squared 2t is 3 minus y divided by 3. Now I'm going to go back up to here because it seems like I've got almost like the jigsaw pieces that I can put into x because I know what cos squared 2t is in terms of y and I know what sine squared 2t is in terms of y using this information up here. So if I were to substitute those two things into this x equation that I've got, I would no longer have t anywhere. I would just have x and y, which is a Cartesian equation that we've got. So I'm going to just do some of that substitution. So x is equal to 3 multiplied by cos squared t, which is this, 3 minus y over 3, all divided by sine squared t. What is sine squared t the same as? Look at the beginning bit that they've given us. What is sine squared 2t equal to? Rearranging this. A third y, just y divided by 3. So on the denominator, we've got y divided by 3. Can you see anything in the numerator that might be able to tidy up or cancel? Yeah, because this is 3 being multiplied by 3, and it's also being divided by 3. So I'm just going to rewrite that top line that these bits are going to cancel. So I have 3 minus y over y over 3, like this. And then I don't really like having this fraction down here, so I might actually multiply up by y over 3. So I will have x multiplied by y over 3 equals 3 minus y. What could I do to both sides of the equation now, maybe? I would probably multiply by 3, so I will have xy equals 9 minus 3y. And they wanted the equation to be in terms of y equals. So what do you think I need to do now? Get the y's onto one side. Let's come over here. So I will have xy plus 3y equals 9. Then I'm going to factorize y. So it is x plus 3 equals 9. So y equals 9 over x plus 3. So this is a demanding question, OK? This is a demanding question because there's an awful lot of us being asked. There's an awful lot being asked of us here. We found out what x was equal to. 
in terms of cos squared and sine squared. We knew that y was in terms of sine squared, but to make it be in terms of cos squared so I could deal with this numerator, of the, this numerator part of the fraction, I had to go through a bit of work using our identities that we have over here. And then there's some quite demanding algebra that gets you to that stage as well. So I am definitely acknowledging that this is a challenging part right now because this feels like a bit of a step up from year 12 maths. But you will look back on this and you will feel more confident with this soon because that's how maths works. You'll, you'll be feeling better with things as you go through with it as well. Now, it did ask for something else in this question. It did say to state the domain on which f of x is defined. So we need to think about the domain of this, given the fact that t is between 0 and pi over 4. Now, this is, this is tricky kind of stuff. So if you're a bit like, whoa, what is being talked about here? Just like listen to it now, and when you come back over questions in the future, we can try some more of these. So we're going to try and find out what the domain is. And currently, the domain is all the stuff to do with x, but it says that t is in between 0 and pi over 4. Okay? It's in between 0 and pi over 4. But if we're putting in 2t, that means that the input into sine squared and cos squared is actually going to be everything between 0 and pi over 2. So I'm just kind of like building up about what are the possible x values that I could get here. And I'm going to do it using this section that I've got. So cos between 0 and pi over 2, what does cos look like between 0 and pi over 2? Pi over 2 is how many degrees? 90 degrees. So cos will go like this for the full 360. So cos can only be between what values? 1 and 0. Okay, So I'm just going to jot that down, that the cos part is just going to be between uh, 0 and 1. And then the sine part in the denominator, what does the sine graph look like between 0 and 90? Also between 0 and 1. So sine part is also going to be between 0 and 1, which means we need to think about how this will behave overall as well. So when t is 0, you would have the numerator would be 1 from cos and the denominator would be 0, which we can't have, which is why it's saying that t is greater than 0. If you are dividing by something that is very small, you get a very, very big number, which means that you can have that x is going to be not bounded at the top. x is going to be allowed to be a very big number. We're just going to see if there is something that stops it on the small side. When t goes all the way up to pi over 4, which when we substitute it in is actually pi over 2, the top part would be uh, 0, because cos of pi over 2 is 0, and the bottom part would be 1. So it's just 0 divided by 1, which means that the smallest thing that x can be is 0, and there is no limit on what x can be as the biggest thing. Now, there's some quite challenging stuff in there, and you can probably see when I'm thinking. I'm having to do a lot of thinking as your teacher here, and Lots of the time when you see me teaching stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, you just do this, then you just do this. But when you see me having to think really carefully about substituting things in, and when my explanations aren't as crystal clear as usual, that's because I'm having to think a lot harder. So these are challenging kind of stuff. What I am going to do is I'm going to put this in Desmos and show, hopefully, that x is just greater than 0. So let's just go here for a second. So what was the, it was for x, it was 3 cot squared, 2t, and then the y part was, and we want t to be between 0 and pi over 4. So you can see from the sketch here that the domain is that x is all of the values that are greater than 0, okay? And the range looks like less than 3 for the range. But kind of tricky stuff here. So you always use this stuff on Desmos if you want to, to give you a bit of a hint. 